Since its arrival in 2015, the Land Rover Discovery Sport has picked up plenty of fans, impressed by its winning combination of great looks, excellent off-road ability and sharp handling. In fact, it's proved to be so popular that it's now overtaken the Range Rover Evoque as the brand's best-selling vehicle, and it's easy to see why. Practicality is often top of the list if you're after an SUV, and this has it in spades. In fact, it's very easy to forget that the Discovery Sport is about the same length and width of a VW Golf. So let's start here at the back on the two seats that fold up easily out of the boot and they're available on all levels apart from the Eco versions. Now look, I'm five foot four, but average height for a woman and it's absolutely okay for me in here. You know, I've got just enough leg room. Head height isn't too bad. Um, I don't think there are many adults who would thank you for having to do a long journey in here. But let's face it, this is mainly going to be used by families who want that flexibility of seven seats when they need it. And for that job, it's absolutely perfect back here. You know, kids would love the fun of folding the seats up and clambering into the back. And once they're in here, there's plenty to keep them entertained as well. You've got the all important USB port, one of eight that you'll find around the car. You've got their own air vents. There's a couple of cup holders. And for me, most important of all, a couple of airbags back here as well. OK, so let's come around to the back here and make our way into the middle row of seats. See, I told you the kids, I love climbing in and out. Not quite as graceful for me. So that slides back easy enough and in we pop. Now, look, I don't think the legroom is too bad in here at all, even with the back row of seats up. Both um, the front seats are set for the man behind the camera, who is, I think, about ooh, close to six foot. Um, and look, plenty of legroom plenty of head height in here and it's also really well equipped you get air vents again plenty of power outlets of course along with the usb ports that we've all come to expect to find in our cars these days i mean overall the, the inevitable trade-off that you get in terms of space back here for those extra seats i think is more than worth it because this is just such a practical car and at the front, well, it's a calm, relaxing and comfortable place to be, with good-sized door bins and glove box and plenty of useful storage compartments and cubby holes. And once again, you've got power outlets and USB ports galore dotted around the place. One thing I really like is this. Watch, you press that little button, up lifts the second cup holder. And there you've got a little secret compartment, which is actually really useful for storing things in, you know, when you don't want to leave valuables on display in the car. You know, the materials used across the cabin are generally good quality. You know, I could be really picky and complain about, you know, some of the plastics that are lower down. But generally it does, as you'd expect, have a premium, if a rather functional feel about it. Now, really, the heart of the interior, as with most cars these days, is centred around the latest version of Land Rover's infotainment system. An 8-inch touchscreen comes as standard and you upgrade to this 10-inch version with the higher trim levels. Though I do think that the graphics are really clear and crisp, but I think the whole system is let down because there's no secondary way of operating it, either here on the steering wheel or with a kind of rotary dial that you find in BMWs. As for the functionality of the system itself, well, we don't find it the most intuitive to use and really believe it would benefit from the option of Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Although it does have a Wi-Fi hotspot and allows you to access third-party apps like Spotify. The Discovery Sport comes with plenty of equipment as standard, which I guess, given the price, you'd expect. All models come with climate control, cruise control, an 8-inch colour touchscreen and Bluetooth audio streaming, along with part leather upholstery. Of course, as always, the more you spend, the more you get. And you can spec just about everything, from a panoramic sunroof and reversing camera to heating and cooling functions for the seats. This particular model comes with close to £15,000 worth of extras, so you really do need to think carefully when you're tempted by those rather appealing niceties. So here at the back, well, you know, it just goes without saying, doesn't it, that when you've got these two seats up, you don't have an awful lot of space in here. I mean, you probably get, I don't know, a small squashy bag, a couple of bags of shopping in there. That's about your lot. However, it's a really different story once you pop these down, which you do very easily by pulling this sturdy fabric handle. Just folds back down. 
And once they are down, they sit flush to the floor, creating a nice, flat, great sized load area with no awkward boot lip that you have to lift your things over. As I've already mentioned, this isn't one of the larger SUVs, and in my book, that's a good thing, as its compact size and car-like steering makes it easy to drive and park, even without the array of parking aids that you can opt for. The Discovery Sport is currently available with just one engine, a two-litre diesel, which is paired with either a six-speed manual or our preferred choice, an excellent, really smooth nine-speed automatic box. Um, and just as a bit of a side note here, I'm really fond of this lovely rotary dial um, that you get in place of the conventional stick. You know, I find it really easy to use. And I think it just looks very elegant. I love watching it rise out of its console as you start the car. Now the engine range is about to be increased with the arrival of two new petrol engines from their Ingenium engine range along with a more powerful diesel and as part of the company's push to electrify a hybrid is expected to join the lineup in 2018. You know, All-round visibility is of course excellent and I do think this is a really nice driving position. You know, I don't feel too high, too king of the road, but I still have a great view. And of course, that extra height does instill extra confidence behind the wheel. Now, the Discovery Sport borrows heavily from the Range Rover Evoque, which is a really great starting point. But the Sport uses a completely revised rear suspension system, mainly to increase the interior space that you've got back there. And although that suspension's firmness can be evident at low speeds, it really smooths out lumps well at higher speeds, which means that this is a fantastic motorway cruiser. In fact, it's just a great all-rounder. And being a Land Rover, this is one SUV that is just as capable off-road as it is on. But look, let's be realistic. The nearest many of us will actually get to going off-road is driving on one of the many pothole-filled roads that we have here in the UK. But what its capability does give you is confidence and peace of mind when the road conditions are poor. And it's good to know that the terrain response system will always optimise grip whilst you can choose to tweak the setup to tackle a variety of surfaces such as mud, sand, snow and rocks. When it comes to safety, the Discovery Sport's excellent credentials scored it a full five-star rating by the experts at Euro NCAP, which was achieved in the tougher tests introduced in 2014. Cameras trigger emergency braking to warn you about and try to avoid a collision, there's a total of 10 airbags, including one for pedestrians, and you can opt for an array of safety extras, including an automatic parking system. In the overall life of a car, and in an SUV market that changes and develops rapidly, it's fair to say that the Discovery Sport is approaching middle age. But I think it's still an impressive all-rounder, and rather hard to find fault with. If you're in the market for a seven-seat SUV but would like to spend a little less, then click to watch our video of the Skoda Kodiak or take a look at our SUV playlist. Click the logo to subscribe and don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter.